Thank you very much for the introduction. And, uh, and uh, thanks uh, again for the invitation. And thanks uh, for you if you listen to me for about one hour. And uh, uh, I, uh, I prepare a lot of slides. So I'm so sorry for that. I will skip some of that because depending of, uh, of your uh, I can, uh, I can take in my hand, so it probably is easier, that one, so that is, uh, I doing that. So, uh, after, this is the agenda of my talk, I will start with a small introduction of what is uh, uh, for computer vision point of view, human, understand, human behavior understanding, and then we discuss more about the problem of data extraction and knowledge extraction of data, so about detection and classification uh, with uh, some experiment we are doing with deep learning for surveillance and automotive. So the, I probably have to not to, uh, to say to you how much is important human behavior understanding, and probably we we have to study this kind of things for two different reasons. The first one is uh, to support the psychologist and and the sociologist's work for understanding humans. So in this case. Uh, our work, like uh, sometimes in medical imaging, is not necessary to find the best new algorithm, but to understand how can we apply uh, what we know about image analysis and pattern recognition in order to extract uh, some data that are useful for them. For instance, to extract data about the distance between people and uh, the, the relationship with them in order to have this kind of, uh, of um, uh, information. For the other side, Probably human behavior understanding is becoming more important uh, because of uh, the uh, computer intelligence. So in order to extract some knowledge about human for many different applications, like for instance surveillance, human computer interaction, entertainment, automotive, robotics, and many other. Whichever the human is in the loop, robots and computers must, uh, must learn something about that. And, uh, uh, at which level we can do these kind of things. Of course, I use a, a, a old, but I think uh, uh, always uh, true definition that comes from uh, a, a work of Rama Celapa 10 years ago, that uh, they try to distinguish action and activity, means that uh, action is something that uh, starts from a short period of time, in general from just only one single person for a sp single purpose, while instead uh, when you say about activity, say something that involves more people and probably for a long time, and in general with a goal, with the goal to do something. When you think uh, about behavior is something more, because uh, if you think about behavior, you have to put together uh, the movement, the action, the activity, but also what is around, so the other people, the object and the environment, and also what is not around but is behind that, so your belief, uh, your uh, habits and your purpose. And this is something that we learn a lot from psychology works. Uh, uh, every I don't know how much uh, you are using uh, this kind of, of uh, famous uh, psychology behavior that only say that uh, 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 there is just only the 10% of our behavior that is visible, that is say are events and patterns, so I like it for just only for, for this name that they use, but the 90% of that uh, is not uh, so easy to, uh, to understand uh, uh, externally. At the same time, since we are working with images and video, we would like to understand what we can understand from video with visual cues. Uh, sometimes you can do not only the events and the pattern, but you also can understand something uh, like, for instance, the habit or, or the emotion that in general are under this kind of things. Uh, many classification, I, I will skip that, but whenever you think about uh, human behavior understanding, you have to think about which kind of data source you use in, uh, in vision, uh, which kind of, uh, of topic of the person cardinality, so for one people, many people, or group of people, or crowd, uh, which is your observation target, the hand, or the person, or the group of person, and which kind of aspect you take into account, uh, like gender, age, uh, race, and uh, many other, and so I could continue in many different uh, mm, uh, mm, 
in many different uh, dimensions. I would like to spend uh, some word just only for two important dimensions. One dimension is the level of details, uh, that means uh, the head or the, uh, or the body of the full body of many other, and for the other one uh, at a different level of sociality. And uh, uh, using, uh, uh, and I adopt in general this kind of uh, taxonomy that come from psychologists that take into account uh, some uh, uh, three different levels. The level of self-director behavior, the, the level of interpersonal behavior, and the level of social behavior. These are, <clears throat> these are some definitions that come from the psychology glossary. So when I think to self-directed behavior, I think to something that is oriented to your specific goal. So it takes into account just only yourself in order to have these kind of things. Interpersonal behavior must take into account also other people that are around. Social behavior take into account the other people that probably you don't know and the environment that are around to impact and to extract the presence. Of course, uh, uh, probably most of you will uh, recognize uh, the face of Maya here, that uh, Maya Pantic uh, probably was one of the first that was uh, is a good friend of mine, but uh, she was one of the, pre uh, the first one that started to, to study social behavior in, uh, in computer vision. Just to give you some example, um, social behavior, there are so many applications. We will discuss about some of them for, uh, for surveillance, just for instance to understand uh, the behavior of the people. These are many trajectories of my students in my, in my lab. Or uh, egocentric vision came in from uh, wearable camera. Or typical real-time surveillance, what are doing uh, these people. I like these images because these uh, three guys uh, decided uh, some years ago to pick a fire in the school. And at the end, we was able to, to understand uh, because of their behavior, their stupid behavior was to stay all together, one very tall, one very not so tall, with a typical dress that was different to the other one. So we, uh, we, uh, we was not uh, NCIS, but just only to understand very small behavior. Okay, so social behavior is, uh, you, are, you can understand how many applications we can have. And similar, you can have uh, um, different things uh, to, to discuss about uh, human computer, uh, uh, human interaction. This is an example. I, I, I have no time to speak about that, but if you want, there is the, the connection to, with, uh, the, with the paper we presented uh, two years ago. Um, we, dis, uh, we are still working with psychologists in order to understand if uh, we can spot the prejudice of people, just only measuring the distance between the change of distance of people when they start to talk uh, to something that is uh, less usual. So we did experiment with uh, black and white uh, students. We did experiment with hill and not hill person. We did experiment with children in order to assess if it's possible to understand something about this. Of course, uh, this is a work where uh, the, the part of computer vision was very simple, just only to understand the distance between some junction of the body, but uh, it was effective. Uh, and. Uh, been presented uh, um, uh, around. Uh, if you want to, to look uh, um at the, uh, uh, at the first level, instead uh, you can discuss about emotion. There are so many work about that. Uh, so this is a big field in, uh, in computer vision, the emotion analysis. This is a, a small result that we presented uh, two months ago at uh, the conference uh, in Glasgow uh, of multimodal interaction using uh, uh, a deep learning architecture that uh, used not only images, but also the time, the video, and also the speech. Because this is important in order to understand uh, probably I don't want to see uh, this is a behavior it's just only a simple emotion very very simple things but uh, the, the street uh, is interesting to start uh, to, to work about that Okay, uh, going in the direction of the, the talk uh, and uh, the specific talk uh, um, 
behavior understanding in automotive and in surveillance have many points of common. And I would like to start with this sketch of images of what we are doing in Modena. Now we started in Modena a project that is called MATA, Modena Automotive Smart Area, because the Italian Ministry gave us the authorization to, to, to use a part of Modena to train auto, uh, autonomous driving and to do interaction between vehicle and, uh, and um, surveillance camera in order to understand and to communicate between vehicle and to understand many to try to understand something about the, uh, uh, the environment that is around. And so if you think about uh, this project, this uh, problem of surveillance and automotive, uh, you will find many um, points of contact. In general, in human behavior understanding, you do a lot of things. Uh, you have an unconstrained scenario, but uh, in human behavior understanding, you need to have a focus on precise recognition of something, because you need to, to have, uh, at the end, uh, the, the understanding of the, this kind of behavior. In surveillance, uh, traditionally, the, you have a different uh, type of approach, but uh, I would like to say that is a semi-constrained scenario because uh, you, you know where the camera are, probably you can calibrate them and do many things about that. But in this case, uh, I think that detection is the most critical part. I will discuss about that. Is in automotive, uh, the the scenario is more constrained. You have the street, you have this part, you know many things about that. But at the same time, there is not only detection and tracking problem, but there is a problem of segmentation, the problem of understanding what is around. This is important as the other one. And so, but apart of that, there are many uh, interaction. I, this is not a lesson, so I, 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 I don't want to spend too much about that. But we know that the pipeline of human behavior understanding is always the same. You start with images and video, you do detection and tracking because you have to extract information, and at the same time you have to extract some a priori knowledge about the environment around. Putting together, you should extract some human feature uh, from aspect, from expression, uh, actual interaction, and then you go in the direction of behavior analysis. So um, I would like to start with the part that probably I'm more, more expert on. That is a part of uh, tracking and detection. That is a lower level, but uh, is still important. So this is an evergreen problem. And I think that uh, even is uh, 15 years that everyone tried to, to solve this project problem, it has been solved just only in a few uh, elements. For instance, if you are in a constrained scenario, everything now is working. There are companies like that one, that is one of of my former uh, startup uh, that uh, uh, is working to understand uh, the, the mutual uh, position of, uh, uh, but this is here, you are just only 22 stu uh, uh, stupid players <laughs> that are going around. So it's very easy to do that. Instead, when you are in uh, unconstrained scenario, like for instance in uh, surveillance, the the situation become more more complex. This is old work because it's four years ago, and then we we spent two years to do this kind of things with Arno Smolder and Mubarak Shah and other people of the group. But for me, it's very interesting. We try to compare 19 different. Um, trackers, the state of the art uh, uh, four years ago of trackers, with, before deep learning actually, and uh, using 115 very, very difficult videos, uh, like an octopus moving or some transparent object. And what we learned? What we learned in this kind of things that uh, we are far to find a solution, the solution, uh, if you look at this uh, curve, this is a curve of uh, an ideal uh, tracker that uh, take into account the best of the everyone else uh, to put together to, to understand frame by frame what's happened. So if the gray curve is the, the, the upper bound of that, the other one are in uh, this uh, direction. For instance, this means that if you take uh, the best one that uh, at that time was the structural, uh, with the structural SVM uh, uh, engine, uh, just only uh, 103 of the, of the video uh, had been tracked correctly uh, with the NEF score one, but then the other one are not. But if you look at that, 
what you can learn. You can learn that uh, if you see the, the very old NCC, that is just only the normalized cross correlation, is work uh, well or is work similar to the other one. So you don't need uh, structural SVM, many different things. There are some of them that are, was very, very complex of that, uh, but it's just enough uh, to have a cross correlation, so an association of data, if the data are good, in order to have this kind of, of situation. So what we learned from that, uh, that probably the problem is not necessarily the problem of uh, a difficult engine. I come back to the discussion of this morning, but you need some Something simple, but uh, with uh, a good model of the things. Now the, the things is uh, tracking are changed. There are some trackers that are simple too, like that one of Silvio Savarese and Sebastian Turun, that is fantastic because it's very simple too, but at the same time is working well. Uh, this is an example of uh, this uh, work that is just only uh, similar, I don't want to say similar to uh, a CMS network, so they take uh, two, uh, two input, one cropped and another one, and uh, it seems to be simple, but it's not, because this is able perfectly to follow an object, even this object completely changed the size, uh, completely changed uh, the appearance, uh, and this is something that the other tracker in general cannot do it. So. Um, Using a simple method uh, with a well-defined uh, uh, architecture and with uh, well-defined data, sometimes you can find a situa solution that, uh, that can be used. And uh, if, uh, it's not really true, but if the tracking were solved, probably you could do a lot of things, a lot of uh, inference about uh, the behavior of the people, and also the, if you have the trajectory, for instance, of the people, you can do data mining on that, and you can understand something. Uh, I, I would like to cite uh, one of uh, old but, uh, work but, uh, that I like a lot, uh, with uh, Tali Tisby and other people from Israel, that. Uh, we try to combine uh, and uh, to use, uh, uh, to, to detect anomalies in people's trajectory using uh, mm, uh, the Lanuit triangulation and other things. That is uh, just uh, take the assumption that the data are available. If a data available, you can do a lot of things, like for instance, understanding uh, the presence of group that are working that. In this, this is an example of uh, what I presented this morning that I could uh, think about the Pythagorical theorem. So if you know the problem, that in this case is to understand if there are people that are stay together, probably it's not necessary to train a network with a million of data, because you know the model. So what you want, I would like to see if there are two people that are close each other, and if one stop, the other stop, if one turn right, the other one turn right, and so on. So you should find a definition of the problem, definition of the solution, that is in accordance of your goal. In this case, uh, what we are doing, uh, what uh, we, we did actually is to use uh, two different distances. One is the famous uh, proximity, that is just only say how much close you are uh, each other. But the other one is interesting, is the Granger uh, causality that is generally is used in economics. They say that uh, if you have a two trajectory of two time series uh, and you can predict one uh, with uh, the data coming from both uh, and the prediction is better, probably there is a correlation between these two data. And therefore, you can use uh, this kind of things uh, in order to understand if the two trajectories are correlated uh, uh, each other. I like uh, that, uh, that solution because uh, it's uh, elegant enough, and uh, not only that, but also because it's effective. And uh, using uh, this idea that the mo there is a motion causality, as I told you, if uh, you turn uh, right, also the other one do the same, probably you find uh, some situation. If you are interested uh, in uh, working on that, uh, we have an available data set that is uh, pretty used in uh, this kind of uh, uh, group analysis. And uh, look the data. But uh, if you look the data, you can see, okay, uh, assuming that the trajectory are well known, uh, you can find, um, with respect to the, uh, the ground through annotation, you see about uh, a, per, uh, a result in terms of precision and recall that is going between the 82-83% till 97-95%. So, not bad. 
but uh, instead, uh, if you use a real trajectory, real trajectory means trajectory that have extracted by a tracker, by uh, the best uh, of tracking uh, solution uh, in this moment, uh, the, mm, the, mm, the percentage go, go down. So this is not because of the last part of the model, but because, again, the problem of detection is really very important. Of course, you can do the same uh, with the multiple camera tracking. I have just only this slide to present another data set, that is the Duke data set. We, we proposed it together with Carlo Tomasi at Duke University last year, and uh, it's a big one, and I think uh, it can be used. Used. But uh, a part of that, uh, let's suppose that uh, people detection uh, uh, was solved. Is, uh, uh, this is not true. And uh, uh, I discussed a lot uh, with the people of Mod Challenge. Probably you know this. Uh, you, you know the Mod Challenge is uh, one of the most important challenges we have in tracking. And uh, uh, in general, this kind of tracking challenge starts with the detection of people, the detection of the object, and then propose and compare different tracking systems with a lot of measure, false positive, false negative, uh, accuracy, and so on. And if you look, look at the result, you can see that sometimes result of about 73-74% or sometimes 42-70%. So there is a lot of variability of this data. Also in some cases where there is a difficulty in some video, they, they are 28 or 70%. So there are many different things. So if you look at exactly this data, you can understand which is the difference. That you can use private detector or public detector. What does it mean? That uh, the best results are the result where the authors and the, res the, the researcher put uh, effort also in detection and not only use uh, the, the standard detector. So you can see this is uh, with the private detector and the, in, instead just only the, the I, I extracted this data yesterday or two days ago, so there are very new one. That means that the best one, that is this work, uh, that I don't, I don't know, this is, has been presented in CVPR this year, uh, uh, achieve about 56% uh, of, uh, of, uh, of accuracy, of mod accuracy, but with the private uh, detector. Instead, if you use a public detector, the percentage go uh, really uh, uh, far away of them. And uh, for this reason, uh, we, we, we discuss it a lot. Uh, we, think, we, we, uh, we try to understand what's happened uh, if the detection is changed. And uh, this uh, is something uh, we did um, two years ago uh, to, to create a simulator that starting from uh, ground to detection, try to um, add the noise, add the false detection, uh, move the detection, move, um, uh, change, uh, add the false positive, remove uh, detection in order to have a false negative, uh, in order to understand what's happened to tracker if you have a different detector. And uh, as is uh, easy to, uh, um, to imagine, you can see that if you compare two different trackers, one very simple and one very complex, at the end, the problem is the problem of detection. And so uh, this kind of, uh, uh, of matrix, a colored matrix you can see there, is uh, uh, the, mm, the result of the detector according to the precision and the recall of your data. So the blue spot is uh, the, mm, the detection that is provided but most challenge that is just only one and is not necessarily the best one. And so if you use this, you achieve this kind of result, but if you have a, a better or a, or a worse detector, your results are completely different. And for this reason, in order to cope with human behavior understanding and tracking, at least in my lab, but many people are still working more in detection than in tracking on the other things. I give you some um, 
some example. I think that uh, these are the three most important, uh, uh, most important uh, uh, recent result uh, in terms of detection. Uh, that at least uh, the one that uh, we test and are very, uh, very well known. Uh, so probably the SSD and YOLO and YOLO version two are uh, the best one. But even uh, in this case with SSD and YOLO, you receive, you achieve just only 78%. Of uh, uh, mean average precision, so there is uh, still uh, um, something to do, something to do in some uh, specific field. For instance, what we are doing is to try to detect people in very challenging uh, situation, like that one. This is a project we are carrying out uh, uh, in my lab now to detect uh, people uh, and uh, uh, moving autonomous vehicle around uh, a situation like this, uh, where you have people that uh, is really occluded and, uh, and uh, just only partially visible and very far in order to understand uh, their position. In this case, you cannot use SSD or YOLO or neither the NVIDIA DECnet, uh, but you have to train again there. So you have to annotate your data to have you understand the problem and we have to move that but at the end of the result um, are there and uh, looking if you have this kind of things what you can do for instance coming back to the, the, the analysis of the person for instance you can extract some attribute uh, this is a, a, an important uh, field of, uh, of study in computer vision that means that understanding uh, what they call attribute classification of the person. Like, for instance, is a, is a female or a male, is as a jacket or not, as a bag, uh, or which kind of object is carrying on, or many other. And uh, this is a problem that uh, has been attached by many different uh, researchers, but one of the problem is what you can do in surveillance, uh, and also in automotive when you are going around, uh, if the people are uh, overlapped and the people are with a very low resolution. So in, uh, with a few slides, I would like to give you an example of what we are doing. In this case, we are using GAN. You know that uh, GAN is uh, an architecture when you use, uh, uh, at the same time, two different uh, uh, CNN. Uh, the first one, uh, uh, starting, for instance, uh, from noise, extract uh, some data. And this kind of data uh, are passed to a second uh, um, a second network that try to discriminate if this one are fake data or not. And, uh, uh, and the best uh, interesting thing, for this reason I like a lot uh, the GANs, is that you can train both together. So you can uh, at the same time learn to, uh, to be a good fake data, at the same time you learn the other one to discriminate then. It's if you don't start with noise, but uh, we start uh, with the partial data, like for instance, the data with low resolution, or data that is uh, occluded and incomplete. At the same time, it's something that you can think as a, um, a conditional generative model. That means that uh, you should learn the probability to, uh, uh, to discriminate or not this data according to the fact that this data start from real data of, of the data set. This is an example, for instance, of what we are doing with uh, this uh, generative. This is uh, starting with just only noise. So the, the GAN we, um, uh, we, we trained started to learn the idea of person and start to extract some shapes that are similar to, to, to the shape of, uh, of person using uh, starting with the data set in order to do something that in such a manner, if you look uh, really precisely, is not a person, but in this case uh, is that. And uh, the architecture that we are using for um, occluding and, uh, and low resolution 
uh, person is always the same. So you can start uh, with the one data, for instance, an occluded data like that. You go through a generator that is an autoencoder uh, architecture, and you extract uh, uh, something that is a fake person, and uh, you can compare that with an original one, go through a discriminator, then with the cross entropy, try to understand if this is good or not. Here I have some detail, but I think uh, that we can skip them about uh, the architecture we will find in the paper. But uh, I like the results because the results are impressive. Like for instance, if you look at that one or one of that, uh, for instance, this is a person that has been occluded. This is the original one, and this is the one that uh, is reconstructed. Of course, if you are a person like this, uh, here the, you, you have blue jeans uh, instead of black thousand because you don't see them, so you cannot imagine the color of that. But uh, it's something that is very close to, to something similar of natural. And this is the similar things that you can do in order to reconstruct uh, low-level images uh, from um, from low resolution images to that. And if you put together this kind of architecture with another architecture of uh, uh, attribute analysis, at the end uh, you can extract, uh, uh, you can uh, achieve a good aspect recognition also if you start uh, from this kind of uh, uh, small uh, occluded and low resolution uh, data. Um, of course, in order to do this, uh, we need a lot of GPU, we need a lot of days uh, of training, and uh, so we, um, I would like to thank uh, my sponsors that are uh, Facebook and uh, Panasonic for, uh, for the, um, the GPU for that. But uh, at the end, the results are interesting, because uh, if you look at these um, images, uh, you will find here there is a result uh, as, um, something that uh, has been done many times, uh, that is a typical result you can have uh, for attribute analysis of person when the person uh, is uh, well uh, visible. You will achieve a mean value of 78%. Uh, something is uh, better, for instance, uh, this network is able to understand a woman, there is a female, for with a 90% of recall, at least in the data set we used. And so these are the, the data. But if you use instead the occluded images or low resolution images, using the GAN, you can improve the result from the 33% to the 5, 57%. So I don't want to say double, but to improve a lot. So you can use uh, uh, this kind of architecture at least to improve uh, the quality of data to, to, be, to be used. But probably uh, I think that the, the basic idea that we can um, try to do is to follow another, another direction. So to try to find uh, uh, tracking without detection, that means without uh, the bounding box of detection or doing something different. This is something that um, we are doing uh, in a project that is called JUMP to understand the behavior of, uh, of people, especially in basket or in other sport situation. For instance, if you start with the state of the art uh, of uh, trackers and uh, like that one. Uh, this is uh, something very interesting. They start uh, with YOLO or with uh, some detection and then use LSTM or other recurrent network in order to do object tracking. But uh, um, in, instead of using YOLO or the other one, you could try to use uh, other uh, approaches, like that one that has been proposed uh, initially for action analysis, so that in uh, still images, uh, that is called CPM, that is a convolutional post machine that has been presented uh, the, by the group of Takio Kanade last year, uh, that is about uh, the uh, idea of detecting uh, uh, not the people as a wall, but the part of the people. So, this, uh, I would like to present something that uh, is still unpublished because this is something that we are carrying on now, that to use, uh, uh, to use the similar approach to extract the junction of the people, not only in the image, but also in the time, and also using occlusion. And uh, mm, what we can do in this case, uh, using an architecture that takes into account both the time 
and uh, uh, with a small C3G and uh, the, the space. And uh, as you can see there, extracting uh, some data. One data are the junction, the 21 junction of the, of the body. We, we use just only 13 of that. The second one is the connection between junction, like that this called path from the original work. And the third one is to do the temporal um, connection between this. Results uh, are, uh, are interesting, I think. So if you look at uh, something like this, you can extract uh, this point uh, of, uh, uh, of um, uh, like for instance, this is uh, an E of that. You can put together all of them. You can extract uh, the temporal connection between all of them until founding uh, the, um, the connection of all the body from images. And uh, of course, this is something that uh, can be used for, uh, uh, for understanding the behavior of people, or the, at least to understand the, the activity of these people. I'm happy because uh, few of you are Italian, because uh, this is something uh, I don't want to discuss about uh, this person, but he's a good dancer, I think, and uh, uh, he's don't do anything else in the life, so it's good. And, <laughs> Okay, but apart of that, uh, uh, if you see this, uh, this algorithm is uh, um, it's very precise to understand the, um, the motion of the people. We are applying uh, also in a data set. The problem we have uh, is a problem of occlusion. So how can we detect the occlusion? How can we detect, so, and uh, overall, how can we uh, annotate the occlusion in the data? So, and the problem is how can you cope that? Uh, how can you have the data? So um, the answer we have uh, is that uh, the only uh, modality we can have uh, is to simulate the data. We cannot ask to people to annotate uh, every junction and also the junction that you don't see in order to cope with the occlusion. So in this moment, I have two PhD students that uh, are enjoying a lot uh, since they are, wo are working with uh, GTA and with uh, other. And uh, we are creating uh, a data set, a very large data set that uh, uh, I hope that uh, at the end of uh, this month uh, will be public uh, with uh, about uh, 2 million of annotated frames of people and uh, that uh, this kind of people are uh, extracted uh, by uh, computer graphics tools. So you have every information about uh, these people. If you have this, of course, you can extract uh, the data and then if you want, you uh, can have also the people detection that can be used for tracking. Um, in this case, uh, precision and recall are fantastic, but are fantastic in this data set. Uh, so the problem is uh, now what we are doing uh, is to provide a good domain transfer to, to transfer these results uh, also in the real result. Some, sometimes results uh, are good. We have uh, to work a bit because uh, with uh, real data is not so easy to do, but uh, this is something uh, we are doing uh, um, in this period. And if you do this, of course, and if you have this kind of information that uh, action analysis, for instance, in sport uh, is easier. And probably you don't need to have this kind of approach, so to extract the people, to extract the, the bounding box, to have the image, and then to use uh, another network to do action, but probably you can um, skip the image part and you can use just only the feature vector that has been extracted by the data. At the end, it's the same problem that we have since 15 years in pattern recognition. You must find the feature, you must find the pattern recognition method. In this case, uh, this engine in general are neural networks, but the other part is still important. So in a few minutes, I, I was talking with you about surveillance. I would like to spend the last 10 minutes uh, with uh, the other goal. And the other goal is to understand the, the human uh, uh, behavior analysis uh, uh, in uh, automotive. This is something we are doing uh, 
uh, okay, Modena, my department is called Enzo Ferrari, so you can understand. We started a joint lab with Ferrari, uh, working for this part of human-computer interaction. And what we are working on is about multimodality, so especially using depth images in order to extract information about um, everything about the driver. So about the position, the head position, the hand position, everything in order to understand that. There are so many approaches of that, based on landmarks, based on features, based on classifier. Sometimes landmarks are fantastic, but very often if there is problem of light that you cannot apply. You cannot apply neither if the people have glasses or something like this. So what we proposed recently is to use the probably if you see this image is a very complex but it's not so complex architecture based of uh, neural network starting with the first network that extract head in the depth images and extract also the shoulder the second one the last one is the detection is a, a network used in the regression manner in order to extract the three um, uh, 3d angles of the face and this uses three different kind of data. The depth images there, the motion, so the optical flow, and in the middle, uh, this is probably the most interesting part. Um, if I have just only depth image, I have not the aspect, I have not the gray level. But understanding where are the mouth, where is the nose, and where are the eyes is very important. So what uh, we, uh, we propose uh, is to use this kind of network that is a face from depth that uh, do a domain transfer again, uh, and start from a depth image, uh, extract, uh, um, imagine the, the gray level image that is associated with that. And uh, I can give you an example of some result of that. I, I like that part. If you, uh, this is the image that uh, is extracted by a depth uh, time of flight sensor. And uh, this is the motion vector image of the face. This is the depth. And this one is the gray level image that is reconstructed by a deep learning method in order to have this aspect of the face. Giving more detail, these are the depth, these are the original unseen RGB data, and these are the ones that have been reconstructed by the, the network. Um, I started with an autoencoder to do this, with this kind of result. Look, if you look, this is a, a data set with gray level image, with depth images. This was the, the original RGB data. So this is what is extracted by depth sensor, and this is the original data. And this is something that uh, is reconstructed uh, by the image. It's not exactly similar, of course, but it's enough to understand where is the, ob where is, uh, uh, the eyes, uh, if you have glasses or so you don't have it. Uh, so this is very important to, to, to use this kind of data. We recently improved the data using a GAN, and of course the results uh, are uh, more interesting too. Uh, these are the original one. These are the, uh, the ground through. This is the old face with the autoencoder, and this is something uh, that you uh, achieved with the gun. Uh, it's incredible. Uh, the face is not the same, because uh, since it has been tried by another group, so if I go in this network, uh, I will have a completely different uh, aspect with respect to myself, uh, but it's very natural that, so I can use that. This is an example of what the gun is doing uh, in order to extract uh, the image of, uh, of the person to do that. I'm, I'm finishing, or, or at least, because I have just only two seconds. And uh, so this is something we are doing for understanding the behavior of the person inside the car. But probably more interesting is to understand what's happened outside the car. Uh, to up, uh, not uh, in terms of, uh, of car, but in terms of person. So the question is, uh, 
uh, what you are looking, where you are driving. And uh, so in this case, we use different approach. We use uh, a, a saliency network improved with an LSTM. I skip the data also in this case. This uh, uh, architecture that is called SAM uh, is architecture for saliency that uh, I'm, I would like to say because Marcella, one of my PhD students, was very good. Uh, she was the winner of the competition at CVPR for that. So it's, uh, it's a good uh, network for saliency analysis like that one. And this is the, the last example that I would like to show you. This is a, a network that has been trained uh, with general images, so, so don't task related. I would like to say is, is uh, what the passenger sees around. Uh, if you look, uh, is you look about the building, you look about the street, about what's happened around. Uh, so it's going around and it's not task oriented. So these are the, the things that probably are interesting in this kind of scene. But instead, uh, if you use a different approach, stop that uh, starting there, this is instead a network that have been trained with the driving data. So uh, it's, I've been trained with the, with, uh, in order to simulate the behavior of a driver. And so if you see, is looking actually just all in the point where you are looking on. And uh, we, uh, we try to, and so you can see what's happen if uh, one network is trained with one type of data or one net, a network is, try, is, uh, is trained with another one. What we've done in order to have this data, we've co we collected a number of video coming from two different cameras, one on the car, one on the um, eye tracker. We use the SIFT comparison in order to, to collect them, and we created this data set. We use the segmentation and many parts of that in order to extract. And in this case, we have a lot of information about the behavior of the driver. For instance, simple things. You can understand that the people don't look about the pedestrian around. <coughs> It's not important because you look at the pedestrian just only if the pedestrian is a, a dangerous thing for you, but otherwise they, they look the street or they look the other, the other car. And it's the same thing that actually in autonomous driving uh, is done. Okay, I close because uh, my, um, my, uh, this is something that uh, is similar that uh, using also segmentation that is important. And, uh, I can, uh, I can close with uh, some conclusion. Some conclusion uh, for automotive at the end are similar to the one of, uh, um, of surveillance. I skipped that one that is similar things. And so uh, uh, this is something that uh, I, I like to underline that probably I think that uh, you are agree with us. That putting together computer vision, deep architecture and GPU, it's important and it's valuable now. But I think that uh, what you need uh, are student people, researchers, and uh, scientists that understand the problem, that try to match uh, the, uh, the capability we have now with deep learning uh, with uh, this kind of problem. I'm finished now. Thank you very much.